I'm standing on Vito, an engineering marvel, packed with big ideas that are all about shrinking down. I'm Carrie Byron. I've spent much of my professional life exploring science and technology. I'm fascinated by how things work. So come with me on an epic adventure, over four episodes and three years of my life. Yep, it's gonna be worth it. As I follow the story of Vito, Shell's latest platform to find out what makes it special. That is so cool! Along the way, I discover what it takes to deliver deep water energy from one of the most remote locations on the planet. You're telling me this goes five miles down. I find out how Vito is constructed and why clever engineering. There's a lot of PhDs going on in there. And technology. Whoa! This is crazy! Is making Vito one of the most compact and cost-efficient platforms Shell has ever made. In this episode, I find out how Vito's design is reimagining platform construction for Shell. Human ingenuity astounds me. You start out with an ambitious idea. It becomes a design in a computer. You add some creative engineering, technology, and a whole lot of steel. And this can turn into all of that. This is Vito, Shell's brand new platform. And today I'm gonna to find out how this incredible structure is designed and built. I'm at Qwit Offshore Services in Texas, where a team of 600 are working 24 seven to get Vito fully operational, so it can be government certified as ready for duty 150 miles offshore. I'm meeting one of the project engineers. This is Stacy. She's helping bring Vito to life. You've been on Vito since inception, since it was a design on a page. Yeah, it was on a computer screen and drawings when I started on the project, and now here we are. This thing is enormous. Actually, this is pretty small. This is about a third the size of our previous project. I'm sorry, it's a third of the size? This is the efficient compact model? Yes! To show you how small Vito is, by comparison, here's one Shell made earlier, Appomattox. It's one of the largest oil platforms in the world. It's 29 stories high and weighs in at 66,000 tons. But what if Appomattox was reimagined? What if you simplify its design and shrink it down? Redesign it to take advantage of the latest technology to make it more cost efficient and have a smaller footprint. Then it can be leaner and meaner while still supplying the energy needed today and into the future. We're gonna need oil and gas for the next few decades. Yeah, I guess oil's in manufacturing, it's in everything still. It's in everything. It's probably in everything you're wearing today. So. By making this design smaller, more efficient, a smaller footprint, we can actually be providing the oil and gas through the energy transition. This is the simple design. Yeah. There's a lot of PhDs going on in there. <laughs> that's, that, that's a lot of design work. So let's find out how you design an oil platform, while at the same time, create a blueprint that will redefine how future shell platforms are built. First, you need a bunch of talented designers, like these folks in Houston. Second, use cutting edge software that allows multiple teams to work on the design simultaneously. I was in charge of what you see on your screen right here. This is what's keeping you floating. This is Samantha, part of the team that designed the hull. How hard was it to take something giant and make it smaller? We re-looked at everything and we said, okay, what do we actually need? How big does this column need to be. How big do our pontoons need to be? So you just stripped it down to just the essentials. Yep. And this is how you do it? It's a 3D model? Probably 20 years ago, the majority of our stuff was all done in what, 2D AutoCAD. And we've just been evolving it more and more and more. But with Vito, we're using this 3D software. It's got global connections. My team worked on this primary steel, mm -hmm. all of this. Well, you see all this stuff intertwined with it. That's a different team. So in real time, is everybody working on the same drawing? Yes. This allows everybody, doesn't matter who it is, they can look at it on their laptop, their tablet, and even their smartphone. And this speeds things up? Yep. 
But the next step is our operators are actually using this in a VR setting. You can actually see this in VR. Right, yeah, just like you're playing a video game. You want to try it out? I, I can. Yeah, you can try it out. Well, yeah, here. You want to come with me? Yeah, I'll come with you. Let's go. Whoa! <laughs> this is crazy! Yeah, isn't it neat? Currently, we're at the highest point of the platform up on the boom. <laughs> yes, we are. It's 260 feet above the water line. Oh. Can I just like walk around and check things yeah, out? Yeah, go ahead, check it out. How do I get down to that deck? How about superhero style? Pretty cool, eh? Great for sussing out the place before it's even built. And somewhere on board, I'm meeting a man named Joe. He's real, by the way. Wow. Harry. Joe, how are you? This is amazing. It's pretty neat, huh? You guys have really been creating something special here. This has absolutely been a game changer for us. While we're building this platform, our team were able to get into the simulator and walk down everything, make sure it's accurate and correct. So you mean everybody's been working together in the same space from all over the world? From anywhere in the world. As a matter of fact, we have somebody in Singapore right now. Hey, Tyler, come see. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Hi, Carrie. Hi. So what can you do? Tyler, if you don't mind, can you measure that piece of pipe for me right there? Wow, okay, that is cool. What else can he do? Hey Tyler, you have any like party tricks? Yeah, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> He's totally off his head. <laughs> that is a party trick. Can you do that? No, I can't do that. So far, I've learned that big engineering can be squeezed into small spaces. There's a lot of PhDs going on in there. <laughs> that crazy clever software is revolutionizing design. Whoa, look at that. And teams from all over the world can party on inside a virtual veto. Now to the next part of the story. Let's rewind the clock a full three years. We're heading to Singapore on the other side of the planet to find out how global collaboration came together to physically build Vito. It's 2019. Vito is still a pile of steel plates and COVID is yet to grip the world. This is Simcor Marine one of the largest shipyards in the world. With the skilled international workforce available, Vito is being hand-built to cope with the conditions it will face in the Gulf of Mexico. This is Michael, a man obsessed with quality. Quality is very important to Vito because this platform is gonna be used for 25 years and beyond. So the quality of the steel that we have needs to be highest quality material that we can receive. Like a giant flat pack, nearly every part of Vito starts life, well, as a flat sheet of steel. We need to match up this plate with what's shown in the drawings. So each plate is marked with the dimensions, the steel grade, and of course, the Vito number. It's pretty incredible to me that just stacks of steel are gonna be transformed into something that's floating in the Gulf of Mexico that people are going to be living on, working on every day. Making sure Vito is built to the highest standards is paramount. So the strength of every structural weld is ultrasonically tested by hand. And every surface is blasted back to bare metal before being painted. But the genius of Vito's design is its size. By being smaller, it can be built in two halves simultaneously, side by side, and in the same shipyard. The bottom half, the hull, is made up of four vertical cylinders held together by a pontoon. This section is critical to keep Vito afloat. The top side is formed of two main decks, housing machinery, plant equipment, and living accommodations for 60 people. When both are complete, the hull and the top side are put together in one single crane lift. But before that, Vito must pass a critical design test, its stability. To ensure Vito is stable, even in the strongest of storms, the engineers must know its precise weight. So the dry dock is flooded and Vito is floated for the very first time, because only when it's floating can it be weighed. To find out why and how, I'm off to Singapore. Or maybe not. I was super excited to go out to Singapore. I wanted to get out there myself and see Vito being built. 
but COVID had other plans. So instead, I get to do it on a video call. <laughs> hey guys, sorry I couldn't be out there. Hey, 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 hey. So here's Michael with colleague Darren. Today's supposed to be a big day for you, right? That's right, we're weighing the hole. What's your estimate for how much you think it's gonna weigh? It's on the order of 14,000 metric tons. Darren's in charge of structural steel and stability. Remember, this is just the hull. The top sides will come on in about a month. How are you doing your measurements? So, you've heard of Archimedes? Yes, I have. So, let me tell you about Archimedes. 2,000 years ago, he's taken a bath. When? Eureka! He realizes the amount of water displaced by a floating object can be used to calculate the weight of the object itself. That's because one centimeter of cubed water displaced weighs exactly one gram. Today, Darren's team are doing the same, working out the weight of Vito by calculating the volume of water it displaces when it floats. Okay, so right now, we're going around the outside of the hole, marking how high up the water is going. And using Archimedes' principle, we should be able to figure out the weight of the hole. Fantastic. So just to check you guys know what you're doing, I actually came prepared because, um, yep, yeah, Archimedes is my homeboy too. So I got a little vessel here that I could fill with water and a little block of wood here. And I know that this is five by five centimeters. So I thought I could see if I could make this buoyant. Woo! All right, I get to about eight and it gets buoyant. So eight centimeters times the area of the base, which is 25 centimeters squared. So this should weigh 200 grams. We've got... 203 grams. I mean, it's close. Not too bad. It's only about a percent and a half off. We expect the weighing today to be within about a half a percent. How's it going so far? It's going really well so far, actually. The average that we're seeing around the size of the hole looks about to be four meters of water up that the hole is sitting in. The hole is sitting around 14,000 metric tons. So just off the top of your head, you know that we're looking pretty good. We're looking pretty accurate. So you're right, you're using the right method. <laughs> Archimedes 2,000 years ago, tried and true. Fantastic, well, you know, I don't wanna keep you from your jobs. Uh, it sounds like you're doing some important work. So I'm gonna go back to learning my best TikTok dance. You wanna do it with me? That appears to be the margarita. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really that good at it. <laughs> with a successful stability test complete, next comes the challenge of combining the two halves using one of the largest cranes on the planet. Called Goliath, it was designed to lift superstructures just like Vito. Boom, Vito is born. But it's not ready for the Gulf of Mexico yet because its first port of call is Cute Offshore Services in Texas for a final fit out and testing. Here, specialist workers will add living quarters, install the technical equipment, and make sure Vito is operational to US government spec. Only then can it be certified and allowed into service offshore. This is where I also get to see for myself just what a great job the Vito team has done in squashing everything into a tiny space. There's just pipes everywhere. They're above, they're below. Over here is an entire forest of pipes. It's a maze of pipes. But before this thing goes offshore, every last inch has to be tested. In fact, there are almost seven miles of pipe work crammed in here. And on top of that, 1,500 brand new joints that all have to be scrutinized to make sure there's no leaks. Attention platform, attention platform. We're about to do a leak test on the produced water system. Thank you. I'm joining Chris. His mission is to make sure that every inch of pipe work is safe and secure. Okay, Chris, show me what it looks like when you find a leak. First off, what we're doing right now is we're pressurizing this system of piping with, the, uh, with air to try, to try to test all the joints and connections. What we've got here is an ultrasonic leak detector, right? And what this detector does is it picks up on the vibrations and the sound waves made by the leak, right? So you can see here on the screen, we've got this red dot showing highlighted, which shows that we've got a leak right now at the top of this check valve. How sensitive is it? It's, it's extremely sensitive. It, it can even pick up the sound coming out of your mouth of just somebody talking in a normal voice. Okay, point it at me. Can it get something subtle like a, like a snake, like a... Yep, it can. You see? So it can pick up the smallest of sounds. 
Even Wait. with all this construction noise going on around us. That's amazing. Yeah, it really is. Saves our team a lot of time in the field. Okay, so our leak is right there. Our leak is right there. So now what we do for the next part is we need to take this snoop mixture. What's a snoop mixture? Yeah, so good question. Snoop is really simple. It's just a mixture of water and soap. And we apply it to the uh, flange face here where the joint is. And we'll watch and we'll see uh, if bubbles come out. Okay, so. So yeah, right here. Oh right. yeah, look at that. There you go. And you see the bubbles forming. This is the same way I check my camping mattresses because there's always holes in them. Well, there you go. You're well trained. <laughs> so this is just one tiny little pipe. You got to do this to all the pipes. That that's right. It it takes months and months, but luckily we've got a great crew, um, and we'll we'll knock it out one by one, chip away. You know what? I can save you some time. I got a stick of gum. We're all good. <laughs> I haven't seen that done before, but maybe it'll work. And you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> In the next episode, Vito goes live. And I learn how technology is redefining the future of deep water oil and gas. Whoa, is that a jet engine in a cabinet? I get a taste of life on board a floating city. And there's bingo. And there's bingo. Oh, 66. And now, I finally get to get hands-on with this stuff. This is fresh out of the ground. If you want to know more about Vito or the future of deep water oil, check out some of my previous films here. Or some of the other great engineering films from Shell here. Don't miss out on future shows. Subscribe to Shell by clicking the logo.